What's going on, baseball fans? How you doing? We got a big show tonight. A lot of news to get to. Wander Franco, Kendall Graveman, John Means, Sonny Gray, Javier Baez, Steven Matz. We got a lot to talk about. Let's get to it. What is going on, baseball fans? Hello, hello. 65 people to start things off. What is going on? A lot of familiar faces. I see some members in the chat. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone had themselves a good day today. Hope everyone's having a good night. Uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight. We got a packed show. Uh, man, oh man, a lot of stuff happening today. So we got a big extension sign. We got maybe some guys that could maybe be traded. Uh, and some guys also that might not get traded um you know the usual suspects usually that we see in the trade rumors and uh looking like maybe they're not going to go anywhere we're going to talk about that uh a lot of free agent rumors going on right now we got the cba talks right now going on and with that deadline approaching to get a deal worked out a lot of these guys they're looking to maybe try and sign a deal before that deadline so we could be in for a pretty busy week so and hey pretty busy night tonight so we're going to get to it and also a big reliever coming off of the market going to a playoff contender we're going to talk about that as well but uh before i do get into it here hit that subscribe button for me we are trying to get to 20k by opening day uh we've been getting a lot of traffic coming in on the channel in the last couple of days if you have yet to see my free agent predictions, uh, go check those out. I'm probably going to get them all wrong, but uh, hey, go check it out if you're looking to uh, maybe uh, put your eyes on something tonight. And also, I came out with a video, um, was it yesterday I came out with this video? I can't remember when I posted it, but uh, teams are players or free agents, sorry, that teams should sign. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go take a look at that. Um, hey, I put a lot of work into it, so hopefully you guys enjoy uh, but yeah, let's just get to it, everyone. We got a lot to talk about here. So we're going to start off with our main, our top story for tonight. Um, in my opinion, one of the bigger free agents in the market. I mean, this guy really established himself last year uh, between the Seattle Mariners and the Houston Astros. And hey, he's going to a playoff contender. And this bullpen just continues to look extremely good. The Chicago White Sox signing Kendall Graveman. I mean, what a pickup for the Chicago White Sox here. Let's go take a look here. Oh, that's not the right song. Hold on one second, everyone. Oh man, I almost just put on a <laughs> I almost just put on some slipknot for you guys. I was at the gym earlier. I had some slipknot blaring in my headphones, and I almost just put that on for you. Oh man, that would not have set the mood. Um but are we playing? Is it playing? What is going on with my Spotify right now? What are we doing? Why is my volume off? There we go. If anyone needs any background music that's copyright free, Stream Beats is where it's at. Uh, here we go. White Sox signing Kendall Graveman. This guy had a phenomenal season last year. With the Mariners, this guy really turned it on for them. And then there was a big trade involved, you know, a couple of... I thought it was a good trade. Ended up getting Abraham Toro. Um, and then the Mariners ended up making a separate trade for Diego Castillo. I thought for the Mariners that ended up being a pretty good deal because they were able to maneuver another way and get another guy to take his place in a Diego Castillo. But, you know, yes, it was tough for them to lose Kendall Graveman. But in, in the end, they were able to get some pieces back in return. But I digress. Kendall Graveman, what a season last year. 1.77 ERA. Had 10 saves over 53 games. The FIP, one thing to take notice here, uh, was higher than that ERA, 1.77 ERA, but a 3.19 FIP. So 
keep in mind of that. But with Kendall Graveman, you're going to get velocity. You're going to get ground balls, heavy sinker. You're going to get a good slider in there as well. Kendall Graveman, he is only going to make this White Sox bullpen even better. I mean, if you look at this bullpen right now, this bullpen is stacked. Are you kidding me? Like this bullpen, if this, if this set of guys stays healthy, holy cow. Now, question is, what are they going to do with Craig Kimbrell? So there were reports, you know, a few weeks ago that the White Sox were wanting to exercise Kimbrell's option, but then trade him. So does this make Kimbrell more expendable now, now that you have a guy in a Kendall Graven that really could just be your setup guy? Kimbrell, I, wa I think there's going to be a market out there for Kimbrell. Look how I think a team like the Phillies could really go after Kimbrell. Dave Dabrowski has traded for him before, uh, back going back to his days with the Red Sox. I think he would be more than happy to go you know, take a look at Craig Kimbrell. It depends on the price, though. I, you know, Kimbrell, he was good last year with the Cubs. He went to the White Sox, had some struggles. So, I don't know. Maybe going back to the National League would be a good fit for uh, Craig Kimbrell. Now, are they going to have the universal DH? I don't know. But I think, I think uh, the Phillies would be a good fit for Craig Kimbrell personally. But there's a lot of teams out there. Anyone could use bullpen arms. But uh, those kind of teams could really use uh, like a big arm like that. So look out for that. Uh, but Graveman, this is a solid pickup for the White Sox. I mean, there, there's just arms all over the place right now. Liam Hendricks. I mean, let's just imagine Kimbrell isn't there let's say he goes elsewhere but you're gonna have graveman and bummer as your setup guys you got crochet i mean he is just, i mean even ryan burr had himself a good season last year i mean look at even jose ruiz 65 innings last year i mean this bullpen is stacked let's say you keep kimbrel let's say kimbrel's able to figure it out you have i mean in my opinion on paper at least just one of the most shut down bullpens out there I mean, really, this has, but if you keep the bullpen like this, this could, this has the potential. I mean, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but this has the potential to be one of the best bullpens of all time. I mean, this is nuts. Look at these guys. I mean, this is stacked. A huge move for the White Sox. They're obviously still looking to make moves. They're not going to be standing pat by any means. So will this be the end of the moves for the White Sox? We're going to have to wait and see, but... I love this for the White Sox. I, I wasn't expecting the White Sox to go after a guy like Graveman, but hey, adding to your riches, you know, you already had a really good bullpen. Um, I, you know, I, when, when it comes to free agents, we tend to, you know, look, you know, so like Kendall Graveman, you know, you're thinking, okay, well, maybe a team that really didn't do well with their relief pitching last year, you know, could go after a guy like this, really help improve that bullpen. But you got to keep in mind too, those teams who already have a strength, why not add to that strength? And this is exactly what the White Sox just did. So that's nasty. This is huge for the White Sox. Um, in my opinion, the best looking bullpen out there right now. Um, but let's move on to another deal. One, a, a, a historic deal, an extension signed by Mr. Wander Franco with the Rays, uh, a historic deal, a massive deal. This guy has been literally in the major leagues. I think he played for what, 70 games. And this guy just got paid and I love it. I think this is exactly what teams need to be doing. I think these teams who have these young star players get these guys signed. I mean, I understand Wander Franco is a bit of a different case. Now, if we go take a look here at the story, so with a Wander Franco, this is going to be a, this is a, you know, a, its own, uh, it's unique in its own way because Franco is just so talented. When you watched Franco last year in the 70 games that he did play, uh, I believe it was 70. Yeah. And then the playoffs as well. He just looked like he belonged. He did. I mean, when you just watched him, even in the playoffs, he hit 368 in the playoffs, had a couple of home runs. He just looked like he had been there for a while you know and i think he obviously he's he was the number one prospect for good reason there was there's just something about this guy where he has just superstar written all over him and there was a reason he was such a highly regarded prospect and i think for the rays you always wondered like with this Rays team 
you know, they don't have, they usually don't go out there and spend money. They usually don't do this. This is something they don't do. I think they've known this now for at least a couple of years. They said, all right, you know what? We got to get this guy locked up, get him up to the major leagues. You know, let's see how he does. And if he, if he even, you know, is even somewhat of what his potential is let's get this guy locked up and this guy completely exceeded I think exceeded expectations I mean he did slump a little there when he first came up but just a phenomenal I mean 70 games 288 average with 347 on base I mean look at the projected numbers for next year he's projected according to the steamer projections expected to hit 290 with a 347 on base, so that would be the same as what he had this past year. 474 slugging, 19 homers, 84 RBIs, 10 stolen bases. Uh, I mean, I I think you, he could even do better than that. Honestly, I think this guy is just so good. And, you know, I don't know. I think this just, it, this makes so much sense. An 11-year deal, uh, $182 million. There is a $25 million option. Uh, it's a club option. So by that time... He would be, I believe he would be, he's 20 years old right now, right? He's 20 years old, about to turn 21 in a few in a few months. But by that time, he's going to be in his 30s. You know, I think this is just such a good deal, you know, because you're going to get the best years of him. Now, when he's, who knows, 12 years down the road from now, how is he going to be? Or 11 years down the road, what kind of a player are we going to have at that point? I mean, the what this guy is super athletic. I don't, I don't only imagine this guy is going to keep himself in good shape for the whole term of his contract. I don't know. That's just, I would hope so. But this to me is exactly what teams need to be doing with these really good young players. Don't let these guys go to arbitration. You don't want any, any risk of bad feelings coming out of these arbitration cases. Just get this guy locked up. You make this guy the face of your franchise. This is what you needed to do with the Rays. And hey, maybe they've been trying to cut costs. I mean, well, I mean, let's I mean, be real here. They just don't sell a lot of tickets. They don't make a lot of revenue. But the Rays, they have been putting away all of their pennies. They have been making sure, like, all right, we got to get this guy locked up long term. And honestly, I think it's a great deal. He's getting around, like, what, 9, 18, 19 million per season maybe a little bit less i mean if you include the option um so that's 223 over 12 so come on calculator you're killing me uh 223 over 12 so that's 18 and a half million if they do end up exercising the club option the 182 divided by 11 so right now he's going to be averaging 16 and a half million over that time i mean that sounds like a bargain you know, especially when this guy is going to be, what, 27, 28 years old, you know? I mean, that's going to be a bargain at that point. If, if he ends up being the superstar that he's capable of being, that's going to be, what a bargain that's going to be. <laughs> and let's just say, for some reason, the Rays at that point, they just, they can't, they can't pay him. They got to get rid of that contract. Could you imagine the trade market if he ends up, you know, 27, 28 years old? Could you imagine what the market would be for him if they, you know, told teams down the road, you know, six, seven years from now, said, hey, we're open to uh, trading Wander Franco. We're, let's let's hear some offers. Could you imagine what that's going to be like? Um, you know, you never know with the Ray. I think with the Rays, this is your long term guy. You know, this is this is the face. So great move for the Rays. If we actually take a look. That is the 20th biggest contract in Major League Baseball right now. That's easily a record for someone of his age and his playing time. Easily. The, the previous record was uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. As of right now, he has the 39th highest contract. That is a budget contract. I mean, that is, wow. That, that is just a, a uh, not a budget, a bargain contract right there. Eight years, $100 million. He had the record for... Uh, getting the biggest contract for under, what was it, 100 games played. And uh, now Wander Franco easily just demolishing that record. So I think that's money well spent. I think this is a good investment for the future. I mean, you got to think of it from the Rays' point of view. Obviously, you have you have a an electric superstar kind of a player at a premium position at shortstop. But this is a guy, you're, if you're the Rays, you're, you're going to make... 
you're going to bank off of this deal. You're going to, you know, all the jersey sales, all the shirt sales. I mean, you're going <laughs> to, what an investment this is for the Rays. This is a solid investment. And I mean, honestly, they're getting him for a great price. I don't know. I think this, that was a no brainer. Just the way he played, just the way he carried himself this past year. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, as a Red Sox fan, I absolutely hate it. I can't stand it. But, you know, having to, knowing that I'm going to have to watch this guy just, you know, completely kill our team over the next 10 years, that is, that's just killing me thinking about it. But uh, good for the Rays. Uh, that's a solid move overall. But uh, moving on here, our next story, uh, let's get to some free agent talk. So we have Javier Baez. Looking like, I mean, we're, I was mentioning earlier the CBA talks right now. Who knows what's going to happen with that? And you have the deadline fast approaching December 2nd. And uh, Javier Baez looking like he may want to get to a team before that deadline. So it's expected uh, that he will be signing soon. So let's take a look here at the story. Now, this was uh, reported by Andy Martino of... What is he working for SNY? Let's take a look here. So, according to his sources, Mets among the several teams in on Javier Baez who could sign before December 2nd. Now, we were just hearing Javier Baez's name pop up last week. The Red Sox emerged as a suitor for a Javier Baez, a, a team that is showing some interest in Baez. So, um... The Mets right now, I mean, they were uh, talking today. Um, they were, uh, Billy Epler was talking today, and he was saying that they would love to keep Javier Baez around. So I, I don't see why you wouldn't. He enjoyed his time there. He played extremely well for you. Take a look at his numbers from last year. Overall, he had 265 with 31 homers, uh, a 319 on base, 494 slugging, a 116 WRC+. Plus. But with the Mets, if we take a look at just his numbers from the Mets, he killed it. Over 47 games, he hit 299, a 371 on base, which that's the biggest stat that jumps out most of all with Javier Baez because he's never really been an on-base kind of a guy. But they figured something out with him with the Mets, and it looks like maybe he has turned a corner when it comes to his plate discipline. So right now, he really helped himself out for this off season and uh because that's a huge jump right there huge jump so if we actually take a look at the uh let's take a look at his plate discipline stats so plate discipline if we actually take a look here at the because they show it here between the cubs and the mets so he was making all around the same he was swinging the same amount on pitches that were outside. He was actually swinging less at pitches in the zone with the Mets. He actually didn't swing as much with the Mets, about 2% less. His outside contact actually decreased. But if you look at here, with the Cubs, he had a 71.7% zone contact percentage. But with the Mets... That jumped up around 6%. So maybe something mechanically that he figured out and he was able to make just more contact overall. Um, it's funny because his zone his zone percentage, percentage of pitches seen inside the strike zone, he that actually decreased a good amount. Uh, if we take a look here, first pitch strike. He actually, um, he actually had a much lower first pitch strike percentage with the Mets. So overall... He actually, he just, he did great. He did great with the Mets. Let me actually go here at batted ball. The batted ball stats. Uh, so with the Mets, what, much more hard contact with the Mets. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good sign overall. He definitely figured something out. I mean, obviously the stats show it, but I'm thinking there was something mechanically they tinkered with his swing. Uh, something something they probably they, they definitely figured something out for him so now the question is is where is he going to end up going I mean there's definitely some teams obviously that would love to have a Javier Baez I mean again the Mets the Red Sox you know could you see a team like the Cardinals you know they're 
I personally don't think they really need a shortstop. I mean, sure, you could maybe improve. But uh, could you see a team like the Cardinals go after a Javier Baez? Maybe, hey, who knows what's going on with Carlos Correa, the Astros possibly. Let me actually pull up here some, uh, some stats for you. Let's take a look at the shortstop rankings from last season. And actually, I'll take a look here at the projected depth charts for next season. But let's take a look from last year. The teams that really could use a shortstop um, overall... I mean, I think the Angels would be a really good fit. I know the Angels, we all say they need pitching, but their production at shortstop last year was just not good. It was not good. I believe they were 29th overall. No, they were dead last, sorry. They were dead last at defense uh, with their shortstops last season. So Javier Baez would be a great glove overall. I think that would be a great fit for the Angels, honestly. But then you got some other teams. I mean, maybe a team maybe Philly you know who knows what I mean with Didi Gregorius had a bad season last year could you I mean or what do you do with a Bryson Stott I think that's very possible to, you, but I don't know do they want to spend money uh, that much money at short I'm not sure about that Texas obviously is a possibility too there's a lot of possibilities out there I mean there's even been people you know chatting about could he go back to the Cubs so I think there's a lot of things that could end up happening uh, be on the lookout for this. I think this is uh, this is intriguing. And again, look out for the Red Sox. I think the Red Sox could be a bit of a dark horse team for Javier Baez. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, hey, in the next week or so, we could see Javier Baez with a new team. So let's move on here to our next story. Let's get into some... Uh, Let's get into, you know, actually, let me go to this next story before I get into that. Since we're talking about the Mets uh, with Javier Baez, the Mets are actually uh, looking at a, a former uh, a former picture of theirs, an old friend with uh, Steven Matz, and it's also looking like he could be signing this week as well. And the Mets are showing some interest in Steven Matz. So let's take a look here. But it's not just the Mets. you got a lot of teams out there that are actually very intrigued with Steven Matz. And you want to know why teams are intrigued with Steven Matz? You know, because you're thinking here, well, I didn't see this many teams showing that much interest in Eduardo Rodriguez. You know, there were a few teams, the Red Sox, the Angels, the Tigers. Um, but, you know, funny enough, I thought Eduardo Rodriguez would be a great fit for the Cardinals. And now it's funny. Well, why would the Cardinals be showing interest in Steven Matz, but not Eduardo Rodriguez? You know what the difference is? It's the qualifying offer. Steven Matz was not offered the qualifying offer, so you don't have to give up a draft pick to sign him. So that's a lot of teams like that. They really don't like giving up draft picks. And the Cardinals, they, they could use, you know, draft picks. I mean, they're not really in a position to be giving up all of these... Um, Let's go to where they rank here. I don't think the Cardinals, I think they're right middle of the road or like maybe they're like 20th when it comes to their farm system. Yeah, 20th. I got it. Yeah, 20th overall. St. Louis, I'm, you know, I predicted Eduardo Rodriguez to go to the Cardinals. But now that I think about it, I mean, it makes more sense for them to go after a Steven Matz, honestly, just because they really could use a lefty in the rotation. Let me actually pull up the Cardinals here. They have no lefties in that rotation. Let's take a look. They got all righties. It's not a bad looking rotation. Wainwright, Flaherty, Hudson, Michaelis, Woodford. I think a lefty is would be, you know, if you're not going to bring back Lester or Hap, I think if you can bring in Steven Matz on like a three-year deal, I think, that, I think that would be pretty good for the Cardinals, if you ask me. But they're going to have some competition. The Angels always looking for pitching. The Angels were looking at Eduardo Rodriguez. So well, no, no surprise to see the Angels get involved here. The Cubs could use pitching. Uh, dramatically, they could use pitching. Let's pull up the, uh, the Cubs pitching staff as of right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see him land with the Cubs. Sure, you did add Wade Miley, a lefty. So... But they need innings. I mean, look at these guys from last year. Hendricks, he had 181 innings. Miley, I think, is going to be a nice addition for the Cubs. He's going to give you innings. So, and he had a pretty good season last year, too. Uh, Alzale, they were kind of putting him in the bullpen last year. 
um, towards the end of the season uh, to kind of limit his innings. So I think you're going to see him throw some more innings next year. That'd be good if he can take a step forward. Alec Mills is kind of whatever. I see Alec Mills as like a fifth starter, honestly, like a long relief kind of a guy. And then you have Justin Steele here. Now, I think as someone like a Steven Matz would be some give you some okay innings, you know, back end of the rotation. You know, with the Cubs, I think it's going to be a couple of years before you really see, you know, some some good guys in this rotation. I think Matz would be a nice addition for a three-year deal. That way you have him, you know, third, you know, third or fourth starter over the next uh, couple of years. You know, and then you get Braylon Marquez eventually. That could be pretty nice. But uh, no surprise to see these teams getting involved. Then you also have the Giants. I mean, the Giants are just trying to add pitching right now. You know. There's no word on Alex Cobb. It looked like they were starting to maybe make some progress on that. I haven't heard anything about that. They brought back Desclafani, Desclafani, sorry, and Alex Wood. So, could we see the Giants bring in a Steven Matz? Could be pretty good. And no, no surprise about the Red Sox. They lost Eduardo Rodriguez. You could bring and and they got a draft pick for Eduardo Rodriguez. So, they wouldn't have to give up a draft pick for Steven Matz. I think. I, I don't know. I think that could be pretty good for the Red Sox. Uh, and hey, just go back. Going back to the Blue Jays makes sense too. So, Matz has a market. He has a market. And let's take a look at his numbers. And there's a good reason why. He looked way better in the second half last year. Let me actually pull up his splits here. If we go to the first half, he had a. He had an FIP of 4.09. And what was his ERA? Why doesn't it show ERA right there? Whatever. But he had a FIP of 4.09. And then if you take a look at the second half, it was a 3.48 in the second half. He was way better down the stretch. So, yeah, overall, good numbers. 29 starts. I'd actually say... I mean, could you say that's probably his, his best season? Yeah. I mean, you go back to 2016, you did pretty good then. He only had 22 starts, but I mean, sure, he's thrown, he had back-to-back 30-start -back seasons in 2018 and 2019, but 2021, I mean, he just, I don't know, just a good all-around season, the highest wins above replacement in his career. He's projected for next year, uh, 29 starts again, you know, kind of around the same numbers. So, I think teams, I think just the fact that you don't have to give up the draft pick for him, I think that's really big for these teams. So, I'm excited to see where he ends up. And I, I always love it when a guy gets all of this attention, you know, and teams is kind of trying to just beat the other team's offers or whatever. So, I'm intrigued about Steven Matz. I'm intrigued about Javier Baez. So, hey. That'd be nice to see if we can get some guys signing. I love that Kendall Graveman signed. Uh, hey, it's, remember last year? We didn't see any action for like the, what was it, the first month? That was like the worst. Remember that offseason last year? We had, I called it the offseason of interest. Remember last year you had all these, you know, reports, all oh, this team's interested, this team's interested, but no one was signing. Oh, it was the worst. And once guys got going, it was fine. But... It's nice to see that you're getting some action here. And no surprise, especially with the CBA talks and the deadline fast approaching. So that's why these guys, they're trying, especially pitchers. Pitchers want to know where they're going to play. They, they Pitchers are very routine oriented. They need to know what they're doing. They need to know what team they're going to be playing for. They need to know everything. You know, pitchers are very detail oriented. And uh, these guys want to have a home and they want to know where they're playing. So... We'll have to keep an eye on this uh, over the next week. But uh, let's move on here. Let's uh, let's get more into some trade talk. We have some pictures that, uh, hey, could be on the market here. And uh, there was one guy in particular that people were thinking, oh, if this guy was on the market last year, well, he's got to be on the market this year, right? Well, probably not. According to reports, the Reds actually looking like they're open, open to trading Sonny Gray. But they kind of want to hang on to a Luis Castillo this time around. And a Maley as well. So let's go take a look at this story. The Reds. Open to trading Sonny Gray. Hey, you know, Sonny Gray, he's got himself a pretty nice contract. 
a very uh, very friendly contract. He's on a four-year, thirty-eight million dollar deal. Hey, an option, a team option for twenty-three. So, I mean, hey, Sonny Gray is a is a pretty nice guy to have. Last year, four point one nine ERA, three point nine nine FIP, ten strikeouts per nine. Hey. What is, what is there not to like? Sonny Gray is cheap. He's going to give you some solid starts. For the, for the most part, he's been healthy in his career. I mean, hey, this is a solid guy to put, you know, good number three, I think. I, I would say he's probably a three in your rotation. Um, or he's a good, he's a two in like a, I don't know, like a lesser team. So Cincinnati, as of right now, I mean, he is slotted in as the number three. As of right now, Castillo, Maley, Gray. Now, it's it's funny with Luis Castillo because everyone was going crazy over Luis Castillo. I was going crazy. I was trying to say, get this guy to Boston. We need this, you know, this kind of a guy, frontline starter. I would have loved Luis Castillo with the Red Sox. I still would. But the fact that they're hanging on to him, or at least reports are saying they want to hang on to him, there's no surprise. Why no why? Why no surprise? Because the guy's cheap. He's cheap. I mean, honestly, if you're the Reds, why would you want to trade him? There's no reason to. He's not a free agent now.